we are going to have a heroic experience with yourselves. I invite all of you right now to open yourselves up into a heroic awareness of yourselves and what's really alive inside you. The heroic things you've done to get to here, the heroic things you're going to do in the future, and to truly allow that in. Okay? Let's truly allow that in. So I ask you to really look inside right now and see the heroic power that is within you that has shown up in all the times of doubt and all the times of fear and every single time that you have felt like it was too big of a challenge, too great of a risk, too big of an obstacle to overcome, something showed up. Who's felt that before? Hmm? Who wants more of that in their life? Who wants to be like more of a hero over the circumstances that threaten and, and could defeat you if you allowed them to? Yes? All right. So I invite you to go within and close your eyes. And please turn on the music. And feel that breath inside you. And as you plant your feet on the ground, if you have your shoes on, I invite you to take your shoes off. A little bit lower. And on this sacred ground, pull that energy up from the earth and feel that tingling power in your feet. Feel that sacred energy of this amazing land, this amazing earth, this amazing life that we live. And feel that feminine energy, that emotional power to expand on all the wisdom that you've gained thus far over these last few days. And really feel into all that you have learned and acquired over these last few days. And feel into that heroism that you are. And that deeper awareness of who and what you really are. And allow that up into your body, physically feeling allowing yourself to disconnect from thinking and learning and to physically feel that energy and that wisdom and that power. And I invite you to take a big, beautiful, deep exhale. <sighs> Shaking off the stress of sitting in these seats for so long, feeling a new freshness, a new aliveness rising up from the earth inside you and pulling up that big, beautiful energy with a deep, beautiful inhale into that belly, into that chest, into that throat, into your face, and feeling yourself rising in energy now. Feeling yourself rising in energy now as you allow that air to exhale slowly and powerfully. And as that next easy breath flows in now your lungs, I invite you to raise your hands up above your head on that big, beautiful inhale and stretch that amazing body up, that miraculous body that you possess and feel yourself bigger and grander than you have all day. And as you exhale, bring those hands down to the earth. And then inhale one more time and pull that energy up from the earth. Feel that feminine energy rising up from the earth. And then feel yourself rising up into your greatness, into that masculine power, into that masculine awareness. And feeling your heart meet in the middle. And exhale one more time. And give yourself massive credit for being here, for being now, for doing all the beautiful things that you're doing in the world, for committing to purpose, for committing to community, committing to a higher life, a purpose-driven life, a heroic life. Thank you for being, thank you for being here. There we go. So the question of why am I here? Why was I chosen? Why did Laurent and I meet? We met in Miami, Florida recently. If you bring that music down a little bit, I appreciate that. And this is why I'm here. This is what I do. This is our community, very similar to this one, a purpose-driven entrepreneur. We can bring the music down now, bro. Thank you. And this is why I do what I do. This is why. Breakthrough moments, transformational growth, breaking through the bounds and the programs and the fears and the conditioning that would keep us from living the life that we we're really destined to live, that would keep us from truly expressing the heroism and creativity the heroism and contribution, the heroism and philanthropy that we were truly meant to live. This is why I do what I do. So we can truly get in touch with that magnificent aspect of ourselves that is invincible, that cannot be damaged, that cannot be traumatized, that cannot be thwarted, that is always present, 
that is always powerful, that is always ready to get to the next level, and is always ready to see something greater than ourselves within the beautiful, profound power of community. This is why I do what I do. This is why I'm here. And so I invite all of you into the awareness of connection amongst each other and feel into the satisfaction, feel into the peace, feel into the power, feel into the joy of being truly connected to each other. How does it really feel to be out of isolation? How does it really feel to be connected to people who are so similar to you, who are similarly motivated, that see the world the same way that you do, that desire the same things that you do? How does that feel? I invite you to take a big, beautiful, deep breath with that, that feeling and that knowing, and make that sound of, that, of connection. Ah. One more time with a little bit more gusto. Ah. I know it's late, but stick with me. It's going to pay off, I promise you. And once more, this is why. Human connection. Finding a greater sense of purpose and peace and power and prosperity and passion and all the other cool P words. And finding that place within ourselves. And find that place within each other. When I can look at you and go, I see you. You're me. You just look different. I see you. You're me. You just look different. I see you and you and you and you. And you all want the same things that I do. Community, purpose, passion, abundance, prosperity, impact, community, tribe. Yes? Along the right lines? Yes. One more time. Yes, 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 yes. Fuck yes. So what I do is called Aurea. This is our organization. It means golden in Latin, as some of you may already know. And we believe that we are now in and stepping further into a golden age. And that golden age is composed of us truly owning our power, truly owning our gifts, truly expressing our uniqueness. And as we come together in community, we can create something that nothing can stop, nothing can thwart, and that all fear, concern, anxiety, threats of the future can at least drastically reduce, if not be totally eliminated through the extraordinary power of sharing each other's gifts in a fully expressed way. Because when I see you in your power to, to transplant a heart, <sighs> unbelievable. When I see your power to transform communities around the world, <sighs> unbelievable. And save people off death row, <sighs> unbelievable. When we come together with these incredible skill sets and abilities, we can see life through a divine lens. We can see how it's all on purpose. And the theme you may have seen in the materials from Yoko is that you were born for this. And I, the reason I say it, the reason I call it this, is because we are born for this. I do believe there's a higher mind. I'm not religious, but I have experienced so many countless synchronicities and coincidences and miraculous moments and life-saving opportunities and the right person at the right time that I know I feel, I believe, inviolably, that there is a higher force guiding us. And despite how traumatized the world is and the different crises that we face, there is some kind of guiding hand to this world. That's what I believe. So we do live events, we do masterminds, we do retreats, and we are creating community. I might need to change it to hospitality for the next one here. <laughs> and that is what we're doing. And we are creating amazing spaces. We're creating amazing connections between people. And I'm truly honored to be here in front of you all and to see how we all get to create in the future because the connections here have been extraordinary. Have you met someone that's life-changing right in, in, during this trip? Yes. Like someone, if you really leaned into the connection, if you really followed through and followed up and can continue the, the relationship, could that be a life-changing relationship that you've already made here during these last few days? Absolutely. That's why I'm here. There we go. So my hero's journey, my tale of suffering and trial and tribulation to get to a place of power and peace and passion is an interesting one. And like many of you, I am also a corporate refugee. You got corporate refugees in the house? Yes? <laughs> Woohoo for the corporate refugees. It hurt so much. <laughs> it was so bad. It was so awful. <laughs> All the hollow joy and the, and the trumped up enthusiasm on the conference calls. Oh, the next product launch is great and we're happy about it. And it sucks. This product is shit. I'm so sick of these sales. It sucks. Oh my God, I've heard so many hollow sales calls and hollow like corporate calls where we're trying to be enthusiastic about the next bullshit no one cares about. Oh my God, it's brutal. How did, how, how did any of us ever do it? I don't know. How, how, was ever, how are any of us doing it now? No idea. No idea. 
So started out in private equity. I got a fluke internship in college, spent six or seven years doing that craziness with Goldman Sachs and JP and all those assholes. Learned a lot from them. It was a beautiful case study in sociopath, <laughs> sociopathy. It was great. Really cool. <laughs> Just really learning how like a human shark would swim through the, through the land. Like, how does that work? It was great. It was great. And it went into enterprise software sales like Liz back there. Yeah, yeah, I did six or seven years of that. Uh, worked for a couple of high growth tech startups, sold for about half a billion dollars each. So I, I was winning the game. Okay, I was in the game. I was winning the game. And I was fucking miserable. I didn't get it. And when you, when you, when I, speaking for myself, and maybe you can relate, when you climb the wrong mountain, when you're winning the wrong game, and you're winning, and it still sucks, that's really rough. Like when you're winning and you're not happy, that really sucks. Because then it just doesn't make any sense at all. Like when you're losing, it's like, yeah, okay, this makes sense. I lost hard. <laughs> really failed on this one. I get it. <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> Made some mistakes along the way here. But when I did the things right, and I learned the tools, and I said the words, and I listened, I did the thing I thought I was supposed to do, and I'm still unhappy, that's a really rough place. And maybe you've been in a similar situation. And I really appreciate those of you who have shared being in that situation, especially you, Dr. Jessica. Big shout out, because that was beautiful. Super, super courageous. Super courageous what you shared. It was beautiful. Let's give a round of applause, Dr. Jessica, huh? That was awesome. Truly. What's that? Yes, here's to escaping. Here's to escaping, truly. So the last software company that I worked at, Hurricane uh, Irma was coming up over Cuba, and it was a Category 5 hurricane, okay? It was like, potentially an absolute disaster, okay? And I'm from Florida, so like hurricanes are a real traumatic thing for us. So it was barreling up Florida, and I was at my mom's house, boarding my mom's house up, and my sales manager called, and he is in my face about sales figures, like in my face, all right? Aggressive. We got to do this. We got to do that. I'm like, bro, I could not possibly give less fucks about anything you're saying right now. None of this matters. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, there was a freaking hurricane coming, and you want to talk about sales, bro. What is wrong with you? Like, you, have, you are lost, man, and I can't hide this. You are completely insane. Shut up and get off the phone. I don't care about anything you're saying. I got fired. <laughs> I came home after the hurricane. We got into another fight, unsurprisingly, because I was done. I was completely burned out. And yes, really did. Got fired. It was awesome. <laughs> and it was at that point where there was finally enough pain. There's finally enough present tense pain for me to know this is fucking over. No more. No more. So if you're at or near the no more of this bullshit point, I invite you to really feel the pain because the pain is part of the journey. Yeah? Who here has like learned massively from pain and failure? Like, right? Like the pain is the good stuff. Like the winning is great. The parting is awesome. It's so great. It's so fun. And we learn nothing from it. Nothing. So going deeper into the journey is this. And maybe you've already seen it. Who, who here knows the hero's journey structure? Okay, yeah, awesome. So for those of you that aren't familiar, it was really collected by an amazing man named Joseph Campbell. Actually, I'm, I skipped one step. So after getting fired, I started my own marketing and mindset coaching company for purpose-driven entrepreneurs because I knew who I wanted to serve and I knew who deep down I really was. And I was always living this double life through all those years of bullshit and you know, shark cage diving with these idiots <laughs> and trying not to lose my soul in the process. <laughs> Lost a little bit of it. I got it back, thankfully. At least most of it. Still a little piece. I got to do some ayahuasca or some soul retriever stuff or something like that. I don't know, but it's complicated. <laughs> Trauma. It's so, it's so complicated. Regardless, I got to do some really amazing things with really amazing people. And I met incredible mentors along the way. And as you can see, the mentors are massively important in the process. And getting to serve these committed entrepreneurs, getting to serve these amazing healers and teachers and coaches and leaders... I got to really see people that were fully, truly expressed, living their dharma, living their purpose, and with an entirely different vibration, an entirely different feeling, an entirely different knowing of who and what they really were and why they were on the planet. Who here knows why they're on the planet? Like really deeply in your gut, like you know why you're here. Who wants to know why they're here? Yes? Okay, yes. 
All right, keep feeling into that. All right, because just that desire will propel you in the direction that you need to go. So about a year ago, after doing the mindset and coaching work for the last six years, started Aurea, and that's and we've done a number of events since then. That's where I met Lorana, Miami. So being succinct, I know it's late here. That's the most succinct version I can deliver there. So fulfilling the promise that I made about seeing the world as it's meant to be, seeing yourself as who you're meant to be, this is the framework that Joseph Campbell created many years ago, many decades ago, after surveying almost every single religion and spiritual faith on the planet. He really did. He's, an, he's a, a religious and spiritual historian with really no comparison. And he found a similar framework and structure and repeating pattern across almost every single religion and spiritual faith. And he calls it the hero's journey. And it's in every single movie. It's in great marketing materials. It is a core code of the human experience. And we start out in the ordinary world. And there are any Harry Potter fans in the house, it's a really easy example. So he starts off, or Luke Skywalker from Star Wars, he starts off on the farm. He starts off living with the muggles in the ordinary world. And he feels the call to adventure. And you, and you, who here has felt a call to adventure in your life? Yes, there's a calling, there's a deep urge, there's a need, there's an energy that must be satisfied. And if it's not satisfied, massive pain and regret awaits. And thank you for the, the introduction again, Andre, because that is my mission, is helping to ensure that no one that I get to interact with lives out the most horrific pain that there is that I believe. And it's the number one regret of the dying. And it's not having the guts to do your thing in the world. Not having the guts to step up and say, this is who I am. Take it or leave it, life. Take it or leave it, people. This is me, and this is what I commit to. This is what I'm going to live out the rest of my days. Not doing that is the number one regret of the dying. Don't let that happen to you. Do not let that happen to you. Live your fucking truth. Share your voice. Be you unapologetically. Third step, refusing the call. Who here has felt a calling for something great and not done it? <laughs> this guy, okay? It hurts. And it really is a massive problem. And we feel resistance. We feel a, a, a threat of success oftentimes. Is one of the greatest killers. The great Marianne Williamson quote, many of you probably know, we don't fear our darkness, we fear our light. How can that be? Why is that? My theory is that if we really knew how great we were and we compared that vision, that version of who and what we, we are to who we're living as today, the gap between those two points would be so traumatic that it would crush us. So we deny that existence. We say, no, I'm not that cool. I'm not that special. I'm not that smart. I'm not that talented. I'm not that pretty. I'm not that blah, 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 blah. I'm not that, so I can settle for this. Fuck that. No more. You are so much greater than you, than you could ever imagine. And you've all done great things. You've all tasted that greatness. So please, for all of us, more greatness. The next, yes. Next step is meeting the mentor, and I definitely experienced that. I'm sure you all had amazing mentors, and in creating Aurea, that was a massive, massive part of, of how we did this, because it was so far beyond us. We've had like 80 speakers at three events. We had Vishen Lakiani from Mind Valley come to our, our second to last event. Jamie Wheel, the author of Stealing Fire. We've had truly extraordinary people magnetized into our world, and it was through practicing this framework and knowing the power that we, that we really could possess and trusting this process and trusting that we are who we're meant to be and, and believing that there's something extraordinary within us that needs to come to life. And as we lean into that extraordinary feeling, as we lean into that amazing knowing, magnificent synchronicities come into our path. Who here has felt amazing synchronicities in their lives? Yes, the miracles are fucking real. We cross the threshold, we're tested, we find allies, we find enemies, we go to the innermost cave, we find depths within ourselves that we didn't know that we could reach. And there's a story I'm gonna tell about the innermost cave. So before the last Aurea, we put on these events are very expensive. They're well into the six-figure events. And I've been successful, but also having 150 grand to write a check is something I'm not currently doing. Vulnerable share. And we had $65,000 of pledged money, signed contracts, ready to come into our accounts to pay some very large bills, and they pulled out for reasons that were poorly explained, in my opinion. And we didn't have the money. And I woke up at 3 in the morning absolutely ravaged with anxiety because I had huge commitments, massive bills, massive promises, all my reputation on the line, all, everything that I could muster, everything that I was, I felt was tied up in that moment. And so I went to the park at 3 in the morning, and I'm sitting there in front of the water meditating and stretching and praying. 
and trying to find some kind of grace, trying to find some, some inspiration. And I heard this voice in my head say, lay down, face down in the grass. So I went like this. <laughs> lay down, face down in the grass. I had no idea what to do. And I completely surrendered. Completely surrendered like I never have in my entire life. And I faced more pain and more anxiety and more fear than I thought I possibly could. And in that moment, I heard a voice in my head. The divine is real. Trust the process. <sighs> it's not a lot to go on. <laughs> voice in my head. God, spirit, source. I don't know. Whatever words you're comfortable with, I don't know which one you like to use, but some mixture of those for me. And so, okay, I'm going to trust the process. The divine is real. Let's see what happens. I get a call a couple days later. This is like a week and a half before the event. Okay, this is June 9th of this year. I get a call from a friend who says she has a VIP that wants to, to come to Oria. I say, okay, fantastic. She goes, will you get on the phone with him? And she has a great experience. Great. 750 bucks, I'm there. <laughs> I need every dollar I could get. We get on the phone, great call. He's leaving the corporate world, wealth advisor out of Houston, Texas. Really beautiful guy deep down, has been in a super toxic investment world of all kinds of vices and problems, and he's really working to deprogram himself and come out of that world. Okay, who's like deprogrammed themselves from a toxic past? Yes, just me. Okay, all right, I see a couple of brave souls out there. I know it's getting late, stick with me. We're almost there, I promise you. So we have a great conversation. I leave it at the end saying, okay, great. We can't wait to see it. It's going to be an awesome time. And I, and I hold back from pushing the issue to ask him for money on the first conversation because I needed a lot of money and I had to play it just right. Next day comes around. <laughs> hey, Larry. Just wondering, might you be interested in a, in a deeper relationship with Oria? Doesn't answer. His friend calls me, the one that introduced me. Best. Is so mad that I didn't ask her first, which would have been a smart idea. Remember learning from failure? Failed. Big problem. She's pissed. He's not answering. I don't know who else to call, and we have a real problem. A couple hours later, he sends a text. Sounds cool. Let's talk. We talk, and he commits to putting $30,000 into the business. Big fucking win. Awesome. Let's do the paperwork, send you the documents, wiring instructions. Okay, bomb, bomb, bomb. There's hope. There's light in the end of the tunnel. This is possible. Next day, call from the venue, call from our AV team, accelerated payments that I thought were coming later, and I got like $30,000 of bills to pay, almost exactly the amount that he pledged. I needed to pay that that day. He was wiring the money that would take three days to get to our account. So not only did I have to tell our new client, new investor, new whoever, that we needed money to pull this event off. We were needed so much money that he needed to send it directly to the vendors and couldn't even have the time to send it to us first. <laughs> that, was a, that was an awkward phone call. That, one, that was an awkward phone call. <sighs> and it worked. And it happened. And he was in. And he was excited. And he saw us as being in our process, as being in our truth, being in our authenticity, and being willing to commit to doing the thing that we were on it to do. And he stepped up. And he ended up putting $60,000 in. Who's ever experienced one of those moments where like it really felt like all hope was lost and that miracle came through at the end? Yes, yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. So I invite you right now to breathe into that consciousness right now. Like right now, with me, do, do it again. I know it's getting late. Breathe into that knowing, breathe into that trust, bring into that feeling of what it is that you are calling in. What is that miraculous thing that you are waiting for? that you are yearning for. See it as done. Feel it as done. Experience that energy in your body now. Feel the atoms in your cells spinning faster with the energy of that knowing. Feel yourself fully engaged in the celebration and the victory and the accomplishment of that amazing thing. And feel that fulfillment. Feel that satisfaction. Feel that self-respect, self-appreciation, and deep full knowing that life is on our side, that there is some kind of divine hand guiding things, and that you are exactly who you're supposed to be. And this is exactly the life that you're meant to be in right now. Yes. So we got our reward. We took the road back. 
We went into the event by all objective measures, great success, lots of learning lessons, lots of mistakes. Well, maybe not all objective measures because there were mistakes and there were learning lessons. Overall, it was a victory, and we're in the game. And we have a beautiful community and an awesome movement and tremendous momentum going forward. And it's an incredible joy. And thank you so much, Laron, again, for the invitation, man. This guy's you're fucking special, Laron. Really are, man. Thank you. And one more time for Laron, huh? Yes. Then there's the resurrection of yourself coming back to life. And the last final piece is returning with the elixir. Return with the elixir for the people. What is the great lesson of your pain? What is the great lesson of your triumph? What is the miraculous thing that you're meant to bring to the world that only you can deliver? What is that magical thing that only you can deliver? Feel into that. Know into that. Believe into that. And allow that to expand within you. And know how fucking awesome it is. And don't for a second cheapen that. Don't for a second think that it's not needed. Don't for a second think that there aren't millions of people, at least one, but probably millions that desperately need what you have to bring to the world, then you will change their life immediately and forever by sharing that gift. Yes and yes and yes. See you back there, Lisa. Thank you. So that's me. That's Ori. This is what we do. It's getting late. I'm almost 30 minutes in, so I'm going to put a pause on this, and I'm going to invite deeper conversations with all of you. I've so enjoyed being here. So many incredible people in this space. Massive love and respect to you all. Can't wait to have further dialogue. If this lights you up, if this sounds like the world that you want to be a part of, we'd we'll love to see how we can co-create, collaborate, all kinds of amazing things that are happening right now. And yeah, that's it for me. So thank you so much, everybody. Much love. Gratitude. Thank you.